Welcome to Learn the Electrics and this Tech Tips video on bathrooms and rooms with showers. The common questions that we are asked are what are the zones in a bathroom? What do the zones mean? What zones need to be notified as Part P? And what should be RCD protected? The first thing to understand is that bathrooms and rooms with showers are divided into zones. So, imagine a box that is 2.25 metres high and with a width that is the width of the bath plus 0 0.6 metres. If the bath was 0 0.68 metres in width, that would make our box 0 0.6 plus 0 0.68, which is 1.28 metres wide. Part P will apply to any alterations and additions that take place in this box that measures 2.25 metres high and 1.28 metres wide. Here is our typical bathroom and almost all of what follows applies equally to rooms with showers. A reminder then that the height of the zones will be 2.25 metres. Most modern bathrooms are around 2.25 to 2.3 metres but we will imagine here that the bathroom is much higher than this. We will start with zone zero, considered to be the most dangerous zone to be in if an electrical fault happens, so lots of precautions for safety. It is the space inside the bathtub, the space where the water is up to the top of the bath. In other words, where will you be sat when you have a bath? Anything electrical in the zone must be IPX7 rated, in other words submersible, and the voltage must not exceed 12 volts AC or 30 volts DC. It must be a SELV, S -E -L -V circuit only, and any 230 volt transformers used to supply this separated extra low voltage must be installed outside the bathroom zones and only the ELV cables installed in the zones. At Learn Electrics, we also have a video on IP ratings if you need to review what these different IP numbers mean. Zone 1 is the standing space above the bath from the floor up to the height of our box 2.25 metres. The width of zone 1 is the width of the outside edges of the bath. This is not the same as the width of zone 0 which is the inside of the bath. The area underneath the bath is also zone 1 if the underside of the bath is open. Any equipment in zone 1 must be IPX4 rated, including an electric shower if installed. Any lighting in this area should also be IPX4 and the voltage should be SELV or PELV and limited to 25 volts AC or 60 volts DC with a transformer for the extra low voltage installed outside the zones. If you need a refresher on extra low voltages, Learn the Electrics has produced a tech tips video on SELV and PELV, which we have published onto YouTube. Staying with zone one, if the bath has a barrier or panel installed that prevents access to the underside of the bath and a tool or key is needed to remove this panel, then the underside of the bath is no longer zone 1. It is categorised as being outside the zones. Zone 2, the space next to the bath, is an area 60 centimetres or 0 0.6 metres wide all around the bath and up to our standard height of 2.25 metres. Equipment must be IPX4 again, with the exception of a shaver supply unit to BSEN 61558-2 and this must be positioned where direct spray from the shower is unlikely. Self switches and sockets are permitted in this area. The ceiling pull switch for the shower is mounted above the 2.25 meter height and only the cord is inside zone 2. Now we move to an area called outside the zones. This is the whole of the bathroom that is not zone 0, zone 1 or zone 2 and it is all the area above 2.25 metres in height. 
This area, outside the zones, is divided into two parts. The first part is the area from where zone 2 ends to a distance of 3 metres from the outside edge of the bath. Many bathrooms will be less than 3 metres and so this zone will stop when it meets a wall or a door. A towel rail or bathroom heater supplied by 230 volts can be installed in this area but it must be permanently wired into a flex outlet or similar. The outlet can be switched or as some electricians will do install a separate switch for the towel rail outside the bathroom. The circuit must of course be 30 milliamps RCD protected. 230 volt sockets are not permitted in this area that is less than 3 metres from the edge of the bath. Once we move more than 3 metres from the edge of the bath then 230 volt sockets are permitted but they must be 30 milliamps RCD protected. The ceiling light does not need to be IP rated as all parts of it are outside zones 0, 1 or 2. Let's look at rooms with showers now. These are essentially the same as bathrooms with zones and outside zone areas. Zone 0 is the space inside the foot basin. Zone 1 is the space above the foot basin to a height of 2.25 metres from the floor and a width equal to the outside edge of the foot basin. Zone 2 is 0 0.6 metres from the outside edge of the foot basin and then we have the outside zone areas as before. For a shower with no foot basin, as in wet rooms, things are slightly different. The height of zone 0 is taken as 100 millimetres and all the space above up to 2.25 metres is zone 1. There is no zone 2 in a wet room. We go straight to the outside zones as we will see shortly. If we look at an overhead view of a bathroom, we can see that zone 2 travels parallel to the edge of the bath and then at the corner of the bath it wraps itself around the partition. Everything beyond is classed as outside the zones. A shower with a foot basin follows exactly the same rules as the bathroom. Zone 2 is 0 0.6 metres from the edge of the foot basin and then wraps itself around the fixed partition of the shower. A wet room, however, breaks the rules. A wet room does not have a foot basin, just a floor that slopes towards a fixed water outlet and zone 0 and zone 1 are defined as the same width. This width is a circle that is 1.2 metres in radius with its centre at the fixed water outlet or plug hole. This circle stops when it meets a wall, but it does wrap itself around any partitions in the wet room. There is no foot basin, so the height of zone 0 is assumed to be 100 millimetres from the floor. Zone 1 is all the space above zone 0 up to the 2.25 metre height. There is no zone 2 in wet rooms, we go straight to the outside of the zone areas. And what about RCD protection? All 230 volt circuits in a bathroom or room with a shower must be 30 milliamp RCD protected. Underfloor heating should also have 30 milliamp RCD protection. And any cables that pass through the bathroom or room with a shower that are in zones 1 or 2 but are not used in those rooms must also be 30 milliamp RCD protected. Some circuits must be selv or pelv. Where selv or pelv is in use, the 230 volt transformer that supplies the extra low voltage must be sighted outside the zones and only the cables at extra low voltage should be in the zones. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable. Please click on the like button below and by clicking on subscribe you will also have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next twice weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too. We do appreciate it and it does make us feel that all our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar 
will also give you access to all the videos. We also have tech tip articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.